Despite a year of tariffs, trade deficits actually keep on growing. To former World Bank president, visiting scholar at American Enterprise Institute, Paul Wolfowitz, on whether world trade is more important than trade deficits. What do you think, Paul? Well, look, I think world trade is important, but we're going to, as long as we're a borrowing country and don't save enough to cover our demand here and our investment demand, we're going to have a global trade deficit. The bilateral deficits are a question of which balance is, which relationship is more in balance. And obviously the one with China has been out of balance for a long time. But I think, as your previous interview said, what's much more important with China is actually the way in which they've been stealing our technology and getting a jump on us in technologies that are critical for our national security. You know, there, there are members of the administration that I, I believe are more free traders than fair traders, and then there's some that are more fair traders than free traders. Uh, not, the point is, not everybody in the administration agrees that tariffs uh, work well, at least in terms of, of changing our trade deficit, but they thought that something had to be done to stop Chinese bad behavior, and that even if tariffs do end up hurting U.S. consumers and U.S. producers a bit, if it changes the Chinese way of doing business, it might be worth it. Is it a worth it trade-off? It's worth it if you get the kind of agreement you need to have. Obviously, it's, it's useful as a tool of leverage. I share the discomfort with tariff wars, though, because the history of tariff wars back in the 1930s is a pretty dismal one. It sure is. Uh, do you think we've avoided it? I mean, it does appear that that the conversations continue, that they're cordial, that that uh, delaying the the increase in the tariffs is 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 a good sign. It appears that the threat, the danger that we had uh, as to trade wars is, is is pretty much diminished, has it not? It seems to have. But of course, as your previous speaker said, your leverage in a negotiation depends very much on what the other side views as to who needs the agreement more. And if we start signaling that we need it more, then it's going to have a less uh, favorable outcome. To what extent are organizations like the one you were president of, the World Trade Organization, what, are, what ex extent the World Bank, forgive me, is, is going to be helpful in this regard? Because the president has, has pretty clearly shown his disdain for these international financial institutions, whether the World Bank or the IMF or whatever. I hate to put it this way. The World Trade Organization, which you correctly said is not the one I was head of, is extremely important. But the World Bank, I think, is pretty negligible here. And the one thing I would say where it's not negligible and which I find disturbing has been a tendency to promote these Chinese investment projects in developing countries with funds borrowed, frankly, from the American taxpayer, uh, recycled into countries of great strategic and economic importance and putting them in debts that they can't repay. I don't think that's a good pattern for the World Bank. Now, that's an extraordinary uh, charge, and it's one, I, I assume, based on your, your being president uh, of, of the organization. So to what extent did the, did the World Bank actually help the Chinese uh, make these bets with, with underdeveloped countries, bets that uh, may, be, may, may be to the discredit of those countries? Back when I was president, and I'm not taking credit for this, China was behaving better. We've seen a distinct change in China's behavior, both internally and externally in many ways, under the new emperor, Xi Jinping. And part of that change has been this very ambitious Belt and Road project, they, took, they call it, which builds up stakes in a whole range of countries. And the ones that concern me the most at the moment are these African countries with very corrupt mining sectors where the Chinese can operate very easily because they have no Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. And American companies are, as they should be, at a disadvantage. Not at a di they shouldn't be at a disadvantage, but they should be subject to anti-corruption measures. And it's an unfair, it's an unlevel playing, playing field. Finally, Ambassador, you know, when, when, when you were head of, of the World Bank, a lot of people said it was like when John Bolton was ambassador to the UN. Uh, people have been highly critical of organizations that they were now in charge of or ambassador to. Uh, he probably, if he had his, his druthers, would, would think that the world would be a better place without the U.N. I've talked to John about that. What do you think about the World Bank? Would the world be better off without the World Bank, the organization you used to be president of? I don't think so. I think 
one shouldn't exaggerate its importance, but I think if it would be directed more, as I tried to do, directed at reducing this disease of corruption which holds so many countries back and deprives the poor people in those countries of what they should be the benefits they get, and if it would focus more on the poorest countries of the world instead of, as the economist Paul Collier once said, World Bank staff would prefer to work in Brasilia and Beijing because those are Brazil and China are countries that are succeeding than working in the poorest countries in Africa. I think that's where the priority has to be. Paul Wolfowitz, the poorest. visiting scholar at AEI, former president of the World Bank. Great to see you. Thank you for being here, Ambassador. Nice to be with you. Thanks, David.